So we were talking about uh, second order system. Uh, the general transfer function of a second order system is given by this expression. The poles are the roots of this denominator polynomial and which are located over here. We can simply use quadratic formula to determine the location of the poles. If we know the location of poles, we can qualitatively describe the behavior of system. Likewise, we can also look at the value of zeta and see the qualitative behavior of the system. And you remember from the last lecture, the transient specifications for under damp second order systems were provided in terms of overshoot and uh, the speed of the response was determined in terms of peak time, settling time and rise time. And in the last lecture, we derived expressions for uh, all these specifications in terms of zeta and omega n. These expressions are given by, uh, in last lecture we derived these expressions and in today's lecture we shall rewrite all these expressions in another form which will be more suitable uh, and more convenient. You remember the poles can be located in the S plane. S plane is a complex plane with real axis and imaginary axis. And for under damp systems, poles are complex. Real part is equal to minus zeta omega n. And the imaginary part is given by this expression. So this is minus zeta omega n. And this is j omega n into 1 minus zeta squared. <coughs> this term is also uh, written as j omega d. You remember the word damped frequency of oscillation. There was natural frequency of oscillation and <coughs> damped frequency of oscillation. So if, if one pole is over here, the other pole has necessarily need to be at this location, the complex conjugate of this. So what is length of this vector? What is this length? Square of this plus square of this whole square root. So if we compute it, so zeta square omega n square. So this is equal to omega n square square root, which is equal to omega n. So this length is omega n. This angle, the angle which uh, uh, this vector from origin to the pole, that is named as uh, theta. And we can see that cosine of theta, cosine of theta is this length divided by this length, right? So what is that? So zeta is equal to cosine of theta. Cosine of the angle which this vector makes, this vector is from origin to the pole. Clear? With these uh, definitions, uh, we rewrite the expressions. This PP, the peak time, the time required for the response to reach to its peak value is simply equal to pi over omega d. This we have called it omega d. What is settling time? This real part, we rename it, uh, we call it sigma, right? This real part, zeta into omega n is sigma plus minus j omega d. So settling time is equal to 4 over sigma. Clear? And this is equal to pi minus 10 inverse of what is this thing? <coughs> this length divided by this length what is that? 10 theta. So 10 and 10 inverse. What is that? 
Kita. Over, what is this? Omega D. Omega D is omega n multiplied by 1 minus zeta square square root. That is omega D. Omega D is damped frequency of oscillation. What do we mean by damped frequency of oscillation? This is a signal. This is not a sinusoidal signal. Frequency is only defined for sinusoidal signals, right? But this is not sinusoid. However, this period is fixed from here to here, from this or from this peak to this peak, and likewise from this peak to the next peak. This time is some uh, fixed time. So, inverse of that time is called damped frequency of oscillation, right? Omega D. It is not frequency, different from frequency because frequency is defined for sinusoidal. This is not pure sinusoid, this is sinusoid multiplied by decaying exponential. That is why we call it damped frequency. So, any question up to this point? We have simply rewritten all these expressions using our new definitions. Now, what is the advantage? The advantage is that by just looking at the location of the poles and all these things, we can qualitatively talk about rise time, settling time and uh, uh, this overshoot. We just uh, take, one, uh, take a few examples and demonstrate this concept. From here, from these expressions, what we observe is that this TP peak time is inversely proportional to omega D. This pi is constant, so peak time is inversely proportional to omega D. Settling time is inversely proportional to sigma. And this uh, rise time that is inversely proportional to omega d. Overshoot depends upon only zeta. Overshoot only depends upon zeta. Smaller zeta means more overshoot, right? Overshoot is function of zeta and zeta is equal to cosine of theta. Overshoot is function of zeta. What is the advantage of all these expressions that will be clear from these examples? I have two systems. Uh, so differenti let's differentiate this sigma and this sigma by putting d over here. So let's put d over here. So, so this sigma is the level of this axis and that sigma d is some precise value. So we have uh, one system with poles over here. This is system one. Let's label it. And here is the location of poles for system two. I sketch these since the roots are complex, poles are complex. So we know the response will be underdamped. So I sketch the response for the first system. That is system one. And you will be required to sketch response for the second system. So this is response for system 1. And you are required to sketch response for system 2. Tell me which system has more overshoot? System 2 has more overshoot. Because theta is more. Theta more means zeta is small. Theta large means zeta small. This system 2 has smaller zeta. Smaller zeta means more overshoot. If there is less damping, there will be more oscillations. So smaller damping ratio, you also remember it from the expression for C of T. So here it was something multiplied by E raised to the power minus zeta and some other things. 
So zeta smaller means this term will decay slower and more overshoots. Smaller zeta means more overshoots. So one thing what we observe is that this system has more overshoots. What about peak time? Peak time. Yes. Omega D. Omega D for this system is more. So peak time for system 2 will be less. So for system 2, you will get peak earlier. What about settling time? Real part is same for both the systems. So settling time will be the same. So I very roughly sketch it over here just to uh, show all these points. We have more overshoot for this system. System 2. We have more overshoot and peak time is smaller. And then uh, this, uh, these rest of the details are not very accurate because it is just a hand sketch. But what we observe is that settling time for both the system is the same. Clear? Any question? Let's take one more uh, or two more cases. Yes, two more cases. System 1 has poles at this location. These are complex conjugate. And uh, system 2 has poles at this location. Step response for system 1. I sketch it. So, what is comparison of the two systems? Uh, what about peak time? Peak time is same for both the systems. This omega d is same for both the systems. So both the systems have same peak time. Overshoot for system 2 is less. Settling time. Which response settles down earlier? Omega d larger means settling time smaller. So this response will settle down earlier. So uh, peak time both the systems have same peak time and overshoot is smaller for this, uh, this system. So roughly this is the sketch of response for system 2. Peak time for both the systems is same because <coughs> omega d is same. Set, settling time, this response settles down earlier. This has entered into the band uh, faster than this one because the real part of the root is larger. And uh, zeta, this system has, uh, this uh, system 1 has smaller zeta. Smaller zeta means more overshoots. Clear? System uh, 1 has this uh, plot. So, uh, what is plot of response for system 2? What about overshoot? Both the systems have same overshoot. What about peak time? This has smaller peak time. 
What about settling time? This one is smaller. This one has smaller settling time. So if I roughly sketch the plot, overshoot is the same. However, overshoot is same. Peak time. This system has smaller peak time, and response for this system settles down earlier. So that is by location, looking at the location of the poles or looking at the values of zeta and omega n, you are now able to uh, uh, talk about all these specifications. So in later stage when we will be asked to design controller for a system or to achieve some certain transient response specifications, we shall be playing with the location of the poles of the system. We shall somehow change the location of poles for a particular system to achieve uh, the desired specifications. Any question? <coughs>